Hello everyone, it's Lynn here for Superimpose X and today it's time for part 2 of our layers tutorial. We're gonna talk about the rest of the layer features in the app and also check out the transform section. First I'm creating a new session by loading this background image and then I'm gonna add another image on top of it by tapping add layer and photo layer. To move this image around, you go into the transform tab. Using one finger, you can move it around. And using two fingers to pinch the screen, you can make it bigger or smaller. Or you could also use these arrows in the corners to change the size of it. By using these arrows, we're also able to change the ratio of the image by reshaping and distorting it. If you want to be able to resize the image using the arrows without distorting the image, you can lock the ratio by tapping the aspect button in the bottom left corner. And now as you can see, we can scale the image without losing its original proportions. If you want to turn this off, just tap the same button again. By tapping these round arrows, we can also rotate the image. And if we tap this button in the top left corner, it will first align the image and then rotate it by 90 degrees. If you double tap on the image, it will switch between scaling the image up to the edges of the base and placing it in the middle, while still maintaining the same aspect ratio so that the image isn't distorted. You can also use the Fit Base button, which forcefully fits the current layer to the base by distorting the proportions if required. We also have the Snap tool. When you turn this on, it makes the current layer snap to the edges or the middle of the background image when it gets close. This is helpful if we want to align a layer to another layer's edge or midpoint. To turn off the Snap mode, just tap the same button again. We also have the Flip H and Flip V features that allow us to flip the image horizontally or vertically. Now let's mask out the background of this image. I'm going to go to Mask, Mask Tool, and choose the Magic Lasso. To remove the areas inside the arms, I'm using the Magic Brush. And then finally, to finish up the hair, I'm using the hair masking tool. Next, let's add another image as the third layer. In the transform section, I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees and then scale it up to fit the base. The last tool in the transform menu is Blend. Here we can make the image transparent by changing the opacity of the layer, and we can also play around with different blend modes. Blend modes are basically different ways of combining the pixels of this layer with the pixels below. All of these different blend modes have different ways of combining the pixels, and the best way to find the right blend mode for a particular project is just to try them out and see what looks best. I'm gonna go with hard light and drag down the opacity a little bit. Now in the layer stack viewer, I'm going to select the middle layer and tap cast shadow to create a shadow behind the layer to make it look more natural. We can distort and move the shadow around. We can adjust the opacity of the shadow to make it look more or less intense. We can change the blur amount of the shadow to make it softer or harsher. And by tapping this black box, we can even change the color of the shadow. If I tap on the image, that will hide the shadow guides, and now I can instead zoom in and out on the image. If I tap it again, that brings the shadow guides back so that I can adjust the shadow's position again. I'm gonna tap the check button to accept the shadow, but if you change your mind, you can always go back into cast shadow and bring the opacity all the way down to zero to remove it. Now I'm gonna select the background layer and choose camera fill. This feature lets you switch that image with another picture that you take with your camera in real time. That way you can control the position and angle of the image to get the exact desired composition. In the Layers tab, we also have the option to crop the image, which is the only way to change the base size of the image. And lastly, I'm just going to go ahead and save the finished image to my photo library. That's all for this tutorial, I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to check out our other tutorials for Superimposed X, and if you have any questions at all, you're always welcome to send us an email through the Contact Us option inside the app so that we can help you out from there. Bye!